it's one of those things where, you know, the pandemic's off, obviously, you know, awful, but there's a couple of things that are going to come out of this that we think will be really helpful for pharmacy. You know, we've probably pushed forward the ability to immunize and test and, you know, push the appointment based model probably a decade. You know, you've completely, you know, yeah. if you need a paradigm shift in, in how things happen, you take away people's ability to do it the old way. Yeah. And now you've got this new patients come in, they expect to be able to get a test in 15 minutes at their pharmacy. They expect to be able to get a vaccine. So where's the leap between that and being able to do diabetes education or COPD education? Yeah, or just making sure they're educated right. on flu. Right, right. now, and th this is an expe right? Yeah. It's an expectation of things you can and should get at your pharmacy. And that's not going to happen at your big box retail locations, right? You've, you've it, built in this niche that is just really good. Yeah, it's a great niche, and I'm a big fan of the of the phrase "necessity is the motherhood of all inventions," and and I think that that's that's kind of what this year or 2020 was for for us was figuring out that we did have a need to help satisfy and to take care of a patient population that was concerned about um, their own health, the health of their family members, the health of their employees. Um, we have an opportunity to uh, serve that need, make money in the process, evolve our business. Uh, and it was just a matter of going, let's try it. Uh, and I think sometimes we get so fixated in what we do do that we don't get uh, focused enough on what we can do. Um, and uh, uh, one, of my, one of our business clients, actually, that uh, have become uh, good friends of ours, um, he was at the end of the year, I was talking to him and I said, well, Michael, tell me about what 2020 uh, means to you, kind of reflecting back. Uh, and he said, let's see if I can get this right. He basically was saying that 2020 for him was about, um, you know, not being defined by what you didn't think you could do and being defined by what you didn't know you had to do. Uh, and that's that. uh, again, that's paraphrasing, but it's sure. But it but it's exactly right. And we were reflecting on the the uh, uh, the relationships that we built in 2020 that we never would have. But for the pandemic, sure. and but for trying these things, the business opportunities that came about but for the, the pandemic. Uh, and, um, it's, it's not all been good uh, for anybody. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, uh, but I think if you reflect and, and, and are honest with yourself that uh, there's been some good th good things that have come out uh, of that. And, and, and I think immunizations, the, the vaccine, uh, is another example of something that's, that's coming. That's going to be great or it's here. That's going to be great for, for pharmacy. The other thing I, I'm going to really quick though, I, sure. I just hear, Again, it's a common thread we're hearing with with folks like the uh, Kavanaugh Pharmacy and, and Terrytown and Ellis already doing immunizations, already had a CLIA waiver, right? Already did flu testing. They're just so prepared um, and, 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 right. and, and for that, all of that. Well, so hats I, off to you guys for that, all of this. I think a lot of it comes to you. Know, when we go talk to pharmacies about trying to do new things, the most common thing we hear is, I just don't have time for that. <laughs> and sure, it, no, no one don't. does. All, no, right? all yeah. I can think of is that ain't nobody yeah. got time for that. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I love video, that. Right? I love clip, that GIF. You know? Yeah, I love that yeah. GIF. <laughs> but you know, like you guys have shown that you have to make time to do those forward thinking things every now and then, right? Sometimes you have to do a little homework at night and be like, maybe I should buy an ultra low temperature freezer. Maybe I should <laughs> harass my McKesson rep about how to get the test. You know, like those things that seem like they're superfluous in the time, you know, you got to, yeah. like, and Jeff says this to me occasionally and it stuck, I guess, but he was like, you can't get ready. You got to be ready. Yeah, and it's a that's, Jeffism. It, it's such a Jeff thing to say, <laughs> but it's totally true. Um, you know, I, you guys were I, ready I, I, when the, I love that. the problem it's very happened. Yoda, it's very Yoda. Of him it, it is very yeah. Yoda. That is so, so true. Um, all right. So let's kind of, and now you're, I, I was, I was scanning y'all site. Really cool. You, you have a way to, like you said, pay for a test, um, come in, schedule for appointment, but also, um, looks like you're one of the main, you know, places for vaccine there in Little Rock, um, as well. Yes. So, so Josh mentioned the, the late night homework. So, I mean, you, you actually almost described one of our late night uh, discussions in June or July when um, I was doing some late night homework, reading up on Pfizer and Moderna and AZ and Johnson and Johnson and whose vaccine was going to come to market first. And, and we, to, to your point, Mark, we've had a very good and robust uh, immunization practice over the, over the last number of years. Uh, uh, and so we've become, you know, a go-to source for, for a lot of immunizations too. 
And uh, so we're like, we definitely want to be in the COVID immunization game. Um, and so how do we do it? So at, at, in the summer, it looked to me like Pfizer was going to be first to market. And so I, uh, Ann and I were talking one night and uh, talked to another pharmacist who's a business partner of ours uh, one, one evening and Kenny Harrison and called him and said, hey, Kenny. I'm going to go drop about six grand on a freezer. Is that okay? okay. How goes, do you feel about huh? that? <laughs> How do you feel about this? And he goes, uh, well, whatever, what's it for? Uh, and I said, well, <laughs> I, I think the Pfizer vaccine may be the first one to come out. And I am, uh, I'm convinced that if we are in a place to be able to house it, then we'll be in a place to be able to get yeah, it and yeah. thus to be able to administer it. Uh, and so, I mean, it, cause it's, it's all very stepwise, right? I mean, I know, Today we know that you can store it in the in the, the the thermal shipper for a period of time, but we didn't know that then. And the truth is, yeah. people don't like you doing that now. So we took a chance. We we I don't I think it was six thousand bucks with shipping, uh, which is a lot of friggin' money. Yeah, uh, that was that was friggin' by the way. So I still yeah, have sorry, my you still got one. I, I, still got I, one. Still, still on one. the table. Uh, it's on the table. Um, so uh, we ordered it and. Anne thought I was crazy. She's like, this is, this is ridiculous. Where are we going to put this thing? And I said, we're going to put it in your office. It's not a big deal. It's really not, a, not a big deal. <laughs> so I'll be, be darn a week later. I mean, this thing happened quick. A week later, there is a crate uh, at the pharmacy. And she calls me and she's like, there's a crate here. What did you order? And I said, oh, I think it might be the freezer. I didn't expect it to come this quickly. Right, right. So it's this massive wooden crate now sitting in our in our uh, basically the front end of our store because we have nowhere else to put it at the time. And she's, she's like, what are you going to do with it? And I'm like, I'm just going to leave it here for right now because we don't know when this vaccine's coming. I don't really want to uncrate it. I mean, somebody might need it for tissue specimens if Pfizer doesn't get their vaccine approved. You know, this, I, I consider this, you know, a commodity that we can turn if we have to down the road. But for, for right now, it's an insurance policy. So uh, once it looked like Pfizer was moving down the, the, the pathway, um, I called our Department of Health, uh, Dr. Jennifer Dillahay, who's our state's epidemiologist, but is somebody who I've had a relationship for a number of years. And I said, hey, Dr. Dillahay, I just want you to know that we have an ultra low temperature freezer capable of going down to negative 86 degrees Celsius sitting in our pharmacy now. And whenever we know that Pfizer vaccines come and we're ready and we want to help the state, we want to help patients. And she's like, that is so fantastic to know. I'm going to going to make a note of that. I want you to email this person within the department. We're going to start building an infrastructure list in the state, and nice. we're glad to have you at the nice. top of that list. Yep. So that's, awesome. that's relationships. It's another big piece that yeah. we don't talk about enough. Uh, and when I say relationships, I mean outside of pharmacy. Yeah, no, like, I bet yeah, you know your that, public health department. That's we a talk, common, yeah. yeah, that's every time we've talked to somebody who's yeah. been successful at this, they're like, I know my local public health. I know my local right. representatives. I have relationships with all of them. Thank you, it's Trip Logan. Insanely important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trip, Trip's not a Trip's not a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. So so yeah. So we so we bought the freezer. Told the health department about it, yeah. and then it looks all of a sudden like Pfizer may actually happen. So after a couple of months of the crate sitting in the in the front end of the pharmacy, looking looking incredibly professional. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you could dress it up, maybe make it look rustic or something. I, I, no. I could not. No, I could not. Right. It was a crate. Yeah. Uh, but right. but I tried. You know, perhaps it was Egyptian <laughs> artifacts sitting there waiting to right. be unpacked. Right. Something. Tell everybody so, it's the uh, the 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 leg lamp from a Christmas story. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, this this would have been a large leg. <laughs> uh, it was big. Anyway, so we we had to, we opened the crate. Uh, we put it in the uh, in Ann's office, like I threatened to do, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we 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 fired it up and to make sure that it would it would hold uh, temperature. And sure enough, it it would. And uh, so my first experiment with it, once it got down to its negative eighty degrees and was there for about twenty four hours, was to put a Snickers in it to see just how long it would take to Love freeze it. a Snickers. Yeah, uh, and it took all of about you know seventy seconds, I think, Jeez. for a Snickers to go from palatable to a, to construction a chocolate grade. log yeah yeah <laughs> so it was construction. I, I, I've, I've got two really important takeaways from this so far is one that mark did a lot more legal reading than i would have expected <laughs> and i'm right. very impressed and i've not met ann but she sounds like a lovely woman like you seem to torment her pretty effectively <laughs> uh well we, she is a lovely woman uh and uh she she is the heart and soul of our family and the reason our pharmacy is successful um and i, I think she's pretty darn amazing uh, but uh, thank you for recognizing that 